Okay, so what is the one thing that we all struggle with, no matter how far on our spiritual journey that we are on? Distractions. Let me repeat that. Distractions. That is the one thing that we all have in common. I'm about to tell you how you can avoid some of those distractions and how you can use what could be a distraction to your advantage. Stay tuned. Hi you guys, my name is Shantia Coleman. I am a faith-based author and inspirational speaker. One thing that I always wanna make sure that I do is that I cover these videos in prayer. So let me make sure that I do that. My Heavenly Father, I come to you right now thanking you again for this moment in time. This moment in time that we do not take for granted. Father God, I ask in the name of Jesus that you allow the Holy Spirit to speak through me so that something I may say will help someone else on their journey of developing and maintaining their personal relationship with you. As I talk about distractions, help me, Lord, to be able to be so sensitive to your voice that I am able to touch on something that someone desperately needs help with. It's in the name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. Okay, so let's talk about it. Distractions. Oh, distractions is the number one excuse that people use of why they don't spend time with God, of how they tried but just couldn't get in the groove of it because of distractions. But I am here to explain that some distractions are unavoidable, so you just have to flow with it. Again, some distractions you cannot avoid. Even though you can't avoid it, it still is a distraction during your time with God. But there's a way that you can use it to your advantage and still have quality time. Let me explain. I am a mom of two toddlers. One is five and one is three right now at the time that I'm recording this video. But when they were babies, I struggled so hard with trying to have quiet time with God. It seemed as though as soon as I opened up my Bible, as soon as I opened up any book to read, here goes a cry during that time. But let me tell you, children, number one, are a blessing from God. So even though it seems like a distraction, it feels like a distraction at that time, it's unavoidable and it's okay. You just have to flow with it, even when you have children, or shall I say babies, that are involved. For moms who have newborns, we already know how that stage is. They wake up at any given time of the night. They wake up at any given time in the morning. But the power of making God your very first priority is that no matter what, you still spend time with God. Even if that means that you have your Bible open, you have your books open, and you have your baby in your arms. That is how you use that time, regardless if you're not by yourself, regardless if you don't have a quiet setting. It is okay because number one, God sees your heart and God sees you pushing through even though you have your baby in your arms, even though you may be feeding your, your child at the time, even though you may be rocking them at the same time that you're reading and trying to highlight, God sees it all. Now, when it comes to toddlers, okay? Toddlers normally have a I don't want to say a schedule of when they wake up, but you kind of have a pretty pretty good idea that, hey, they're going to wake up at six o'clock or they're going to wake up at seven o'clock. So I highly recommend that when you have toddlers who are, who are early birds, that you wake up early before the time that they normally wake up so that 
you won't be distracted so that you won't get a knock on the door or you won't hear mommy <laughs> during your time that you're reading. That sounds like my son, Caden. When I tell you that it seems like every time that I am about to open up my book or open up something to read during my morning time with God, I hear mommy. But guess what? Even when that happens, I go in the room, I grab him, not grab him, but you know, hold him, carry him into the area that I'm in. I put his pillow, put cover, I put everything so he can be comfortable in this one little area. And then what do I do? Get back to spending time with God. That should not be an excuse and it should not be such a distraction that it makes you just completely stop, okay? So if you know that your child may wake up early in the morning, guess what? You have to wake up earlier than your child. Another unavoidable distraction. Again, let me be clear, these are still distractions, but because they are unavoidable, you cannot use it as an excuse of why you are not spending time with God. Another unavoidable distraction is having other people in your space or in your area. Sometimes you live in a home where as you're waking up early to spend time with God, your spouse or your, you know, your significant other may be getting up, getting dressed to go to work. Or, you know, your your child, your older child may be getting ready for school. Or, you know, the dog may be barking or, you know, just so many different things where your atmosphere is not quiet like you would want it. Your atmosphere is not peachy like you would want it, but that's okay. You still have to tune in to what you are doing. Stay focused on what you are doing. If you have to close the door, if you have to lock it, if you have to, you know, maybe put ear earbuds on, whatever it is, make sure that you push through not having that type of atmosphere that you would want to still spend time with God. I know sometimes I've, I've even went to my car. I've went in the garage, you know, just so that I can have some time, you know, that's not distracted, especially during the weekends. The weekends tend to be where majority of your family is still in the home with you. So if you're waking up during, you know, last like Saturday morning, everybody is there, you know. But again, that's the reason why you should wake up early. Wake up early to spend that time with God. And if you need to switch up your places, meaning go to your car, go to the closet, go in the bathroom, you know, anything where you are able to kind of be secluded, even though your atmosphere may not be exactly how you want it, you can still spend quality time with God. Okay, so let's talk about the distractions that are in here your mind the devil is so busy at times where he uses what you are going through in life to plant seeds in your mind during your time with God where you just cannot focus I mean it doesn't matter what you read it doesn't matter what you say for some reason it feels as though you can't get whatever it is that you're going through out of your mind listen very clearly that is a distraction you must push through when you are being distracted by your own thoughts it is time to pause it is time to recognize exactly what it is and you speak directly to it and bind it in the name of Jesus. Sometimes, even if, even if you're reading, you have to stop reading and call it out for what it is. You may be, you know, uh, uh, reading and highlighting and trying your best to get through the morning, but for some reason, you're not retaining it. You're not. It's, you're not. It's not penetrating you. Pause. Pause 
And now it's time to go to action. That action is to pray your way through your morning time with God. It is time to pray and speak to the enemy. Speak to that attack that is on your mind. Okay? That day, you may not be able to read as much as you normally read. You may not be able to uh, write out things that you normally will write out. But let me tell you, there's power in prayer. Okay, so let's talk about avoidable distractions. Yes, there are distractions that should not be a distraction. Okay, but sometimes it takes someone else to be able to say, hey, you can avoid that. You don't have to do that. That doesn't have to happen. And then it's like a light bulb goes off to be able to say, yeah, that's right. The reason why I am distracted is because of this, that I have the power and the authority to change. So let's dig deeper. Your cell phone is a distraction. Even if you don't try, your phone is a distraction. Your phone is a distraction because it's too many things that you can click on or that you can open up or that you can read that throws you off from the focus that needs to be on God. It is so easy to have your phone because maybe you're reading a scripture or maybe you're reading something out of the Bible. I mean, out of like a Bible app, but next to that is Facebook. Next to that is Instagram. Next to that is your emails. Next to that, hey, you're looking at the clock. They say, oh my God, you know, it's time for me to do something else. That is a distraction. A lot of times we don't try to let our cell phone be a distraction. It just is. So I suggest, just a suggestion, to leave your phone on the nightstand. Leave your phone on the bed. Leave your phone somewhere else while you spend quality time with God. Okay, so let's piggyback off of the cell phone. Let's talk about social media. Social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, any other new thing that pops up, okay? It's a distraction. While you're doing it, you are being distracted, even if it doesn't feel like it. Even if you feel like, you know, maybe this is a part of your ministry or this is a part of your platform or maybe this is a part of something that you, you know, do that you're trying to help other people by blessing them with what you read. But recognize that it is a distraction. Posting on social media can wait. Nothing wrong with trying to share something that you read that you know can be a blessing to someone else but there's a time and there's a place and the time that you spend with God is not the right time right then in that in your area right then you know in 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 your sacred area that you have created that is not the place do not allow social media to be a distraction okay so let's talk about another distraction that nobody recognizes well I'm not gonna say nobody but you wouldn't necessarily think that this is a distraction but it is you want to know what it is your bed get out of the bed because comfort makes you feel as though that, hey, I did a little bit and I'm done. I did a little bit and hey, now let me close it and I'm already in the bed, pull the sheets up and go back to sleep. Get out of the bed. Don't allow being sleepy to be a distraction. It is an avoidable distraction of being sleepy, being tired because you're comfortable in your bed. Okay, so another avoidable distraction is time. Yeah, just that simple. 
time is a distraction. There are so many of us, me included at times, where I did not necessarily wake up when I wanted to wake up because I pressed snooze. And now my time with God is here, but then everything else that I need to do is here. So that means I have this time to do what I need to do for God. How does that sound? And then I have to rush and do everything else. The time that we spend with God should not be like, hurry up and spend time with God. No, that's the benefit of waking up early. That is the benefit of setting your alarm clock and not pressing snooze. The time that we spend with God is to please him. It is not to be rushed. It is not to be put in a box. Don't put God's time in a box. Allow the Holy Spirit just to flow, okay? If you allow the Holy Spirit to flow, He will use your time to your advantage. He will make the time that you spend, regardless of how long it is, He will make you feel so pumped, so on fire, so ready to start your day. Okay, you guys, so I just explained um, different examples of distractions, some of them being unavoidable distractions and some of them being avoidable distractions. Either way, spend time with God and do not allow distractions to stop you, hinder you, or force you to just completely give up and quit, okay? No distraction will be able to do that at all this day forward, okay? I hope you all were blessed by this video. I pray that something I said was a blessing to you and something that you can take with you on this journey of putting God first before everything else. Please share this video and please leave a comment below, okay? I hope you all have a beautiful, beautiful day and infinite blessings to you.